This is the third in my series of videos on imaging and disability, and I'm going to talk about MRI, which stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. In the first video, I talked about x-rays. In the second, about CT scans. Hello, I'm John Foster. I'm a medical doctor who does Social Security disability exams. And as usual, everything I say reflects my own opinions based on my own experience and study and not the opinions of the Social Security Administration or any other medical body. <clears throat> now the MRI is a recently discovered test. It was first developed in 1971 and interestingly the first MRI of a living creature was of a clam which was done in 1974. Unlike x-rays and CT scans, MRI uses magnets, not x-rays. There is no radiation, which means there's no risk of burns or cancer, as there is with x-rays and CT scans. So we don't need to worry about doing them in children or pregnant women. The MRI is the king of imaging for most soft tissue problems. Soft tissue includes things like brain, nerves, muscles, cartilage, ligaments, tendons, but not the best study usually for what we call hard tissue. Hard tissue is tissue that contains metal and there are two major hard tissues in the human body. The first is bone, which contains the metal calcium. The second might surprise you because we don't feel it's a metal, but it's blood. Blood contains a large amount of iron. That's why it's red. And so blood is considered a hard tissue. And if you find this sort of thing interesting, you might want to subscribe to my channel. I put out generally one disability related video a week on Fridays. So the MRI is best for soft tissues, but it's good, but not the best test for bone fractures. However, it's better than CT or x-rays for bone infections and bone tumors because an infection is made out of soft tissue, mostly pus, and a tumor is made out of whatever soft tissue the tumor originated in. As an example, cancer of the prostate gland, which is a soft tissue, often will metastasize, spread, to bone, and an MRI will be the best way to find prostate cancer that's in the bone. <clears throat> MRI scans produce slices of the human body, just like a CT scan. They are static images for the most part, which means they're like a snapshot, not like a video, which is one of the drawbacks of MRI scanning. CT scans are also mostly static. X-rays can be static or they can be videos with a technique called fluoroscopy. And ultrasounds, which I'm going to talk about in the next video, are dynamic. They are almost always video images and therefore they can show the movement of tissue such as the heart beating. Like x-rays and CT scans, a dye called a contrast agent can be added to the body to show things that a plain MRI without contrast won't show. However, the MRI dyes are different chemically from the X-ray and CT scan dyes. So, what, is, what are MRI images helpful for? Well, they're excellent for most brain problems, such as strokes, tumors, or multiple sclerosis. 
However, they are not the best test for bleeding in the brain. Remember, blood contains iron and is best seen with CT scans. For, so for an acute bleed, such as a person who's ruptured a blood vessel in the brain, or a person who's hit their head with great force, a CT scan is much better than an MRI. An MRI is also useful for brain problems including dementia, brain infections, and epilepsy. MRIs are of some use for the heart. They're helpful, but not alone. Usually other studies have to be done as well. MRI is complementary to chest x-ray and echocardiography, which is, uses ultrasound for figuring out what's going on with a heart. And just like with CT scanning, you can't do anything to the heart, such as putting in a stent with an MRI. For that, you need fluoroscopy, a type of video real-time x-ray. The place where the MRI really shines is in musculoskeletal problems, problems with the joint, spine, and muscle problems, also for tumors and infections in any of those structures. Remember, it's usually not number one for bone problems, but it is the best for cartilage problems, such as ligaments, tendons, or discs in the spine. It's also useful for solid organs in the abdomen which includes the liver, pancreas, and kidneys. However, most kidney stones are made with calcium. They're like little pieces of bone, and CT scanning is best for kidney stone. MRI is usually not that good for tissues that contain a lot of air, and that includes the lungs, the stomach, and the intestines. So to sum up, the adv big advantages of MRI is that number one, there's no risk of radiation because no radiation is used. And it, it is by far the best test for static pictures of soft tissues. So what are the disadvantages of MRI? Well, number one, it requires a huge and very expensive machine. One of the most expensive machines in a hospital will be the MRI machine. Second, it uses extremely powerful magnets and you have to be very careful that there is absolutely no magnetic material in the patient or in the room. Both iron and nickel are magnetic. Titanium, which many orthopedic hardware devices are made out of, is not magnetic. So you can do an MRI in a patient who has titanium hardware in them. However, you can't do an MRI if the person has any steel, including stainless steel, or nickel in their body. If the metal is in the body and an MRI is done, the machine will rip the metal out of the body with tremendous force. If there's anything in the room that's magnetic, such as a steel oxygen tank, the MRI machine, when it's turned on, can hurl that metal across the room with tremendous force and people have died from being struck by metal that was in an MRI room that hadn't been carefully screened beforehand. <coughs> the second thing, the next disadvantage is that MRIs take a long time. An X-ray is instantaneous. A CT scan takes only a few minutes. 
but an MRI takes about 15 to 30 minutes and the person has to be in a tubular enclosure which causes claustrophobia for some people and also makes it very difficult if the person needs monitoring and attendance such as a person from the intensive care unit it's very difficult to do an MRI on somebody for example who's getting multiple intravenous lines and is on a ventilator and if an emergency occurs in the MRI room it's very difficult for attendants to take care of that person <clears throat> because an MRI takes a long time the person has to be able to hold still for that time. That becomes a problem in young children and confused or agitated people. It is possible to sedate a person for an MRI, but that introduces a whole bunch of other problems, including the necessity to monitor the person and to have attendants present in case the sedation becomes too deep and, for example, it causes the person to stop breathing while they're in the MRI scan. Finally, an MRI, except in some rare circumstances, cannot provide real-time video images. So if you want to use MRI for something like putting a needle into a deep and difficult to locate area in a person, you, it's not going to be helpful. You're going to want to use either x-ray fluoroscopy or ultrasound. Finally, and this is a big myth surrounding MRIs, at present people are mystified and amazed by MRIs and it's really been overblown. People feel about MRI today the way people feel about x-rays at the turn of the 20th century. That it's a mysterious device that can look inside your body and know all and tell all about everything that's wrong with you. And while MRIs are extremely helpful in the right circumstance, their helpfulness has been greatly exaggerated. And here's an important take-home message. An MRI cannot tell if anything in the body is painful or not. And this is especially important in the case with abnormalities of the spinal discs. MRIs show many abnormalities in spinal discs that don't cause any symptoms in a person whatsoever. They also show problems that people will report are very painful and there's no way from looking at the MRI to know if any abnormality of a disc is painful or causing difficulties or not. To determine that, you have to take a history from the patient and examine them. The other problem with MRIs is while they will show many problems clearly, such as problems with the spinal disc, they give you no information as to when the problem happened. Often people are involved in an automobile accident and get some problems with their spine and an MRI is taken, shows some problems with the disc and it's assumed that the accident caused those disc problems. That is completely and 100% wrong. Unless you had an MRI the day before the accident, there's no way to tell if those problems occurred because of the accident or if they occurred five to ten years ago. Well, I hope this has been helpful. My next video, I've had some comments that I think are very important, so I'm going to respond to them in the next video. And then in the video after that, I'll be talking about ultrasound imaging and disability. There is a fifth common imaging study in medicine, which is called radionuclide scans, 
And I'm not going to do a video on that because although radionuclide scans are very helpful in the right circumstances, they're rarely used for disability claims. Well, as always, remember, if it happens, it's possible.